We have it as one trailer, as a trailer. That would be great too. But we can only play with R-rated films because the trailer is R-rated. Let's try rolling. Oh. Okay, gentlemen, yeah. we have speed. That that was we'll funny though. Resume that. Okay. okay. One second. Okay. <laughs> it's so hot in here. I know. Okay. You ready? Yes. What kind of feedback are you getting? about this film? Well, very good, actually. This is the best feedback I've gotten from any film I've done up, to, up till now, so it's, it's really it's, it's exciting. That must be exciting, because I understand this is the first film where you're really totally at the helm, and you don't have someone kind of looking over your shoulder. And well, it's true. I mean, I, you know, everybody is, is a filmmaker, and you, know, you try to get to a point where you have as much control as possible and as much artistic freedom as possible. And I certainly have that now. I mean, I formed my own company with four other guys and Castle Rock Entertainment. And um, basically, I'm one of the owners of the company. So I don't really have anybody above me saying, you know, you should do this, you shouldn't do that. And I always worked you know, in w with Norman Lear, you know, for his company. And even though I had all the freedom that could be afforded somebody who's working for somebody else, there was always somebody there that, in the back of my mind, to please, somebody that mm -hmm. was kind of looking over me, that I wanted him to, to be happy, I wanted to please Norman. This is the first time I haven't had that, so it's kind of strange, you know, there's nobody pushing me, there's nobody just to prove anything to, just myself. So that was a little bit strange, but uh, uh, I think it worked out okay. Did you please yourself? Yeah, you know, basically, yeah. I mean, you know, every film I make, uh, and uh, you know, you've heard this from a lot of people. I mean, you're never totally satisfied. You, you know, you look at something and uh, um, you say, "Yeah, I did okay here, and not so good here." And I think basically, this is the film I set out to make. So I'm, I'm basically happy. But the strange thing about filmmaking is that you. You make a film, it takes almost over a year to, 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 to finish it. So from the time you start to the time it's released, you've grown as a person over a year. So by the time it gets out there, you're past that. I mean, you're emotionally and hopefully, uh, you know, intellectually past where the film is, you know. So mm -hmm. uh, you look at it and it's like, uh, I look at films that I've made two, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, and it's like picking up a, a composition that you wrote when you were in the eighth grade or something like that. And you say, oh, so this is the way I used to write and this is the way I used to think. So it's not pretty much the same way with, uh, with the films. Do you ever look at your old stuff and go, oh, whew. Well, I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I do actually. I don't really look at it, you know, consciously. I don't say, oh, I'm going to watch the, a film that I've made, but, you know, you're watching television, you're flipping around, and it comes on the cable. So you sit there and you watch a few minutes and you go, oh, man, I can't believe I did that, or why did I do that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you're thinking, you know, you're going through that your whole life. It's a process, it's a, a growth process. The film poses a question Can men and women be friends if there's any kind of sexual attraction there? Well, I think it poses a question, can men and women be friends, period. I mean, and um, does sex always enter into the equation? And if it does, what does that do to the friendship? Um, my answer to it is, I don't think there can be a purely platonic relationship between a man and woman uh, where there isn't some kind of a sexual undercurrent. Now, it may not be acted upon, which, you know, defines platonic. You say, well, that is a platonic relationship. but. Um, there is a sexual tension always there between men and women and it's either acted upon or not and if it's not acted upon usually what will happen is that those two people will drift away from each other and find somebody else that they can have sex with um, so, uh, not, unlike with two women or two men you can have a, a male friend that you can be very close to or a woman can have a female friend that she's very close to and you can have that friend your whole life you know and be intimate and you know come in and out of relationships and in in and out of marriages or whatever and still be close to that person but i don't think you can be close to somebody of the opposite sex for that kind of length of time unless you're married to them or you know sexually involved um, Men and women can be best friends, and they, they are best friends, when they're, but there's always a romantic uh, hookup, I think. So you think that's what the film is saying, what you just said? Uh, it's saying that it's part of what the film says, but the main thing that the film says is, uh, or shows, is what men and women have to go through in order to find each other. The dance that men and women go through to, to hook up with somebody of the opposite sex. The last time I spoke with you, I commented on the fact that you like to surround yourself with people you know. Here we see Billy Crystal, Bruno Kirby, who you've worked with before. 
Is that a comfort zone for you? It is. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you don't surround yourself with people you feel comfortable with just for the sake of it. I mean, if it's not going to be right for the project, you wouldn't, just, you wouldn't do that just because you want to feel comfortable. But if people that you love being with and who are your friends are also perfect for the parts in the, in the film, then it's the greatest, uh, you know, the greatest situation you can have. Tell me about the Billy Crystal story. About, I understand you kind of had him in mind for the part, and he kind of wanted it, but you you saw other people, or well, I mean, I go through a, a, you know a, a long process before deciding who's going to do a, a part in any of the films, and I had to think about everybody before I approached Billy, and particularly with Billy because he is my best friend. I didn't want to. Uh, I wanted to make sure that he was going to be the right one for, for, for the part because you don't want to cast somebody, like I said, who's a friend and then it not work out or it not be quite right, then it puts a tremendous strain on the relationship. So I wanted to be absolutely sure that he was the right one. And once I knew that, uh, then, uh, you know, we had a great experience and it really deepened the friendship. How about Meg Ryan? Meg was, you know, I had... Uh, she had auditioned for me a couple of times in the past, once I think for The Sure Thing and once for Princess Bride. Um, and she wasn't really right for either of those parts, but I'd always remembered you know, liking her and thinking she had a great sense of humor. And she's also matured tremendously in the last four or five years. She's the best actress I've ever worked with. I mean, she really is incredibly gifted. I mean, she can play comedy and drama with equal ease. She's uh, attractive, very sexy and uh, a joy to work with. I mean, she's just one of these, I mean, for a director, you want to find actors who really know what they're doing so that uh, when they come to, the, come to work, they really have their, their character in mind. All you got to do is tweak them here and there to, to get them to do one thing or another, and she was very much that way. Let me ask you one more thing very quickly. Get a two shot on this, if you will. We're doing a piece on, you know they have the t 10 best, the 10 worst dress list? Oh, describe yeah, your look. How would Rob Reiner oh, describe his God, look? God, I, I really don't have a look. I mean, I used to be kind of this preppy type looking guy, which I mean, it was like, uh, you know, I don't know why. But, you know, I, I'm married now, and uh, my wife, who has great taste, I mean, has very classic, classy good taste. And you can see I'm all dressed in black here, you know? So, I, and they're silk, you know, everything's silk. So, I mean, uh, so now, I, I, now I'm this guy. You know, I, I basically don't have a, a, a fashion identity. Uh, I just go along, you know, with, a, with what somebody, wear that, somebody says, oh, okay, I'll wear that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Okay, Joe. Good luck. Thank you.